All right, welcome back. Uh, moving on with our uh, lines. Now we're going to be talking about parallel lines pretty much exclusively. So we're going to do with some properties of parallel lines, and it's going to deal with the types of angles that we know. All right, so the first one we, we talk about corresponding angles. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So that's pretty big, all right? So let's take a look at this picture. So if this line is parallel to this line, here's our transversal, then we know all the corresponding angles are congruent. So two and six are corresponding, so angle two would be congruent to angle six. Four and eight, all these pairs would be actually congruent. Seven would be congruent to three, five would be congruent to one. It's really nice, I mean, if you have this one angle, you can pretty much figure out all the others, all right? But it only happens in parallel lines, all right? So let's take a look here. Find the degree measure of all the angles. Tell how you got them. So, um, well, let's see here. If these are parallel, this is corresponds to this. So 55 and 7 are the same. So this is 55 degrees as well. All right, well, what other kind of angles do we have? We know these are vertical angles, right? So vertical angles are congruent. So five and seven are congruent. So I know that five is 55 degrees. And then five and one are corresponding, right? And corresponding angles are congruent when we have parallel lines. So one is also 55 degrees. If you check it out, hey, these are vertical here, right? So that they're the same. How can I get four? Well, this is a straight line here. So we're just uh, cutting a, a, a 180 degrees, 180 minus the 55 that I already have gives us what, uh, 125? So this one is gonna be 125 degrees, okay? Then likewise, if that's 125, angle eight is corresponding, that's gotta be 125. Six and eight are vertical, so that's gotta be 125. And then two and four are vertical, so that's gotta be 125, all right? So you can see just by knowing that one fact that we have all our angles, which is actually kinda nice, you know? Um, but let's take a look at this. Are there any relationships that we can see, you know, also, you know? Yes, corresponding angles, we have the vertical angles, but is there anything else that we can see in there that might be a shortcut? Well, um, you know, what other angles do we have? We know we have same side interior, so 55 and 125, hmm, well, that's 180, that's interesting. 180 is an interesting number, right? Uh, we also have alternate interior, oh, they look very much like they're going to be the same. We have alternate exterior, they look like they could be the same. So we have a lot of things going on here, so let's talk about them. So the first one is going to be alternate interior angles theorem. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the alternate angles are congruent. So 5 and 3 are alternate interior angles, and since those lines are parallel, angle 5 is going to be congruent to angle 3. Likewise, angle four is gonna be congruent to angle six, okay? Congruent's nice because it just means the same, and that's a good way, they're easy peasy, right? All right, here's another one, same side interior angles. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines and same side interior angles are supplementary, so same side, four and five are same side, so what it says is that the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five it's supplementary, meaning how many degrees is supplementary? 180. Likewise, 3 and 6, so the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 equals 180. Which is nice because now if I knew angle 4, I could plug in what the measure of angle 4 is, subtract it from 180, and find out what I have. Alright, let's find another one. Alternate exterior angles. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. Just like interior angles, now the exterior angles are gonna be congruent, so one and seven. So the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle seven. Or other words, angle one is congruent to angle seven, okay? And then eight and two would also be congruent, which is also nice. This is gonna save us some time. 
when we do uh, problems, all right? So let's try this one. Find the measures of all the angles. Woo, there's a lot of them here, all right? First ones I always kind of like to start with are um, the ones that are not supplementary because that's, you know, some work. But I know that 115 and 2 are corresponding. And since they're corresponding, then they're both 115 degrees. All right. So now if I'm looking at this group of lines, here's my transversal this time. Is there a corresponding angle? No, but alternate interior angles. What do we know about alternate interior angles? They are congruent, so this is 115 degrees. All right. Now let's see. We have some interior angles here. So 115 and 6, those are same side interior, and we know that means 115 plus the measure of angle 6 is going to equal 180. Subtract 115, and our, the measure of angle 6 is going to be 115, I believe. Ah, no, that's what I just had. Oh, boy, thinking ahead. 65. My bad. So this is 65 degrees. And we have the same relationship here. These are same side interior, so angle 5 is going to be 65 degrees. All right, let's see. Now, 1 is corresponding with 6. 1 corresponds to 6. So that's also 65. When I'm going on this line, 6 corresponds to 4. So that is also 65. All right. Let's try another one. Find the measure of each angle indicated. So I want to find this. What kind of rela relationship do I have here? That same side interior. So 114 plus question mark equals 180. Subtract 114 over the other side, and I should get 66. So that would be 66 degrees. All right. Over here, these are alternate interior. What's true about alternate interior angles? They are congruent. So I can make an equation. 102 equals 8x plus 14. Subtract 14 to the other side. I get 88 equals 8x. Divide both sides by 8, and x is 11. All right? So pause the video. You try these two. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you do pause the video quite often, and you try these on your own. It's really beneficial for you to do that. I know some of you just copied down, and I know some of you aren't even listening right now. You're just playing music in the background and watching my pen move. Oh, look at my pen move. Ooh. All right, so let's try this one right here. This one's a little bit different. I wonder if how many of you are actually uh, remember how to solve this one. We have alternate exterior, so we know they're equal. So we have x squared equals 54 plus 3x. When we have a squared, we need to get everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract both of these. So I have x squared minus 3x, uh, excuse me, minus 54 equals 0. Now I have to factor that. Remember, to factor, I need two numbers that multiply to the last number, two numbers that multiply to negative 54, and add to negative 3. All right, if you did the x, all right. And we're going to have something that unmultiplies uh, this. We're going to factor it. Two numbers that multiply to x, the front term. So two numbers that multiply to negative 54 and add to negative 3. That would be negative 9 and positive 6. If you need help on factoring, you really should go to Unit 10 in Algebra 1, the Algebra 1 videos, because this is important. Like, we're going to do factoring all year, and it's not okay to just miss questions all the time. You really need to practice these and, and get better at them, all right? So if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to set x minus 9 equal to 0. And when I do that, I add 9, and I get x is 9. Or I'm going to set x plus 6 equal to 0, and I subtract 6, and I get x equals negative 6. Now, I can't have negative uh, be um, one of the answers, can I? Or can I? Let's take a look. All right? It says find the measure of the angle indicated in bold. If we plug this in, x equals what? Well, negative 6 squared. So negative 6 squared is 36 degrees. That could be one of our answers. All right. Uh, if we plugged it in here, 54 plus 3 times negative 6, that's 54, 
plus negative 18, which again is which is 36. So that works. Let's try 9. 9 squared is 81 degrees. So in this case, we actually have two different answers. We could have 36 degrees or 81 degrees. Kind of crazy, I understand, but totally possible. All right, over here, this last one, these are parallel lines right here. And you have to understand, these are the transversals. So these two here are same side interior. So 2x plus x minus 12 equals 180. 2x and 1x is 3x. I'm going to add 12 to the other side. I have 192. Divide by 3. And when I divide that by 3, 192 divided by 3 is 64 degrees. To find y, same thing. These are same side interior. 3y plus y plus 20 equals 180. Subtract 20. So I got 4y equals 160. Divide by 4. y is... 40 degrees. All right, there you go. I hope you don't have that much frustration on the uh, mastery check. Pass it with uh, flying colors. I'm going to show you a clip here of a simple, uh, Homer having many frustrations. All right, I will see you all on the flip side. Good luck. To start, press any key. Where's the any key? I see esk, katarl, and pig up. There doesn't seem to be any any key. Whew. All this computer hacking is making me thirsty. I think I'll order a tab. Oh, no time for that now. The computer's starting.